With billions of people streaming into cities worldwide, the challenge of providing enough quality, affordable shelter is intensifying. And so far, the world has not risen to it. The United Nations projects that by 2050, 66% of the world's population will live in urban areas, up from 30% in 1950. Many newcomers, if not most, will end up in informal settlements or slums on the peripheries of cities, where basic services like water, electricity, and sanitation are often lacking. In Colombia, for example, such slums are pervasive. As a result, about 3.8 million households, nearly 30% of all families in the country, did not have adequate homes in 2013. More than 650,000 families were homeless, about 5% of the population. And Colombia is far from alone. According to McKinsey Global Institute, 330 million urban households globally live in substandard housing, or are so financially stretched by housing costs that they forego other essentials such as healthcare. If current trends hold, that number could reach 440 million by 2025. MGI estimates that replacing today's inadequate housing and building the additional units needed by 2025 would require 9 to 11 trillion dollars in construction spending alone. Including land, the total cost could be 16 trillion dollars. With public budgets expected to cover only 1 to 3 trillion dollars, market-based initiatives are crucial to filling the financing gap. Of course, there's plenty of market incentive for developers to create more housing at a time of rising demand and limited supply. But allowing property prices to soar, as they have in China, would only exacerbate inequality, as it forces poor people to commute long distances to work or to live in low-quality or informal housing. So the key is to tackle the main obstacles to increasing the housing supply, like land constraints and high construction costs, in equitable ways. To this end, MGI recommends incentivizing private landowners. Density bonuses, for example, increase the permitted floor space on a plot of land and thus its value. In exchange, some of the land must be set aside for affordable units. Similarly, developers should be encouraged to use standardized designs and industrial approaches, like assembling buildings from prefabricated components manufactured off-site. Singapore, which has a comprehensive national housing program supported by generous government subsidies, has long taken advantage of such solutions. In 1967, the Land Acquisition Act empowered the government to acquire land at low cost for public use. The authorities also have emphasized standardization in construction management. There are now about 1 million Housing and Development Board apartments, home to 80% of all Singaporeans. Closing the affordable housing gap will not be easy, if it's possible at all. But it can be narrowed if governments take steps to ensure equitable outcomes. A world where two-thirds of us live in cities is coming soon. Will we be ready for it?